but we have an exam problem that involves calculating the change in enthalpy from heating a substance under constant pressure. And we're also going to calculate the heat and the change in internal energy as well. So this is the problem. And before we go through it, pause the video, see how far you can go on your own, and then unpause the video and come back and work through the solution with me. Okay, so let's begin. When 1.5 moles of CO2 is heated at a constant pressure, and we're given the heat capacity at constant pressure, the molar heat capacity is 37.11 joules per mole Kelvin of 1.25 atm, so there's our pressure. The temperature increases from 273 to 325 Kelvin, and we want to calculate these, these uh, variables right here. So the first thing we're going to start off with is the definition of heat capacity at constant pressure, which is the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature holding pressure constant. This has to be a partial derivative, the rate of change, because enthalpy depends on more than just the temperature. Now we're going to multiply both sides by dt, to get the differential d uh, enthalpy equals cp should be a cp yeah dt right here actually this is okay and if we integrate both sides we just yeah integrate both sides like that we get the change in enthalpy on the left and the change in the temperature on the right because the heat capacity doesn't depend on the temperature according to the data that we're given in the question so this is, the integral is just t, and then from t final to t initial, so that's the change in t. Now, at this point, we need to go to molar heat capacity. So this is the total heat capacity, which is an extensive property. It depends on the amount of substance, but we, we're given the molar heat capacity here. So we need to take the molar heat capacity and multiply it by the number of moles. So let's plug all of this in. Uh, well, substitute this in here, and then we can plug in the numbers. So there's 1.5 moles of gas is what we're given. This is the molar heat capacity, so moles cancel out. And this is the temperature difference from 325, or that's the final temperature, minus 273, which is the initial temperature, gives us a change in enthalpy of plus 2,890 joules. Okay, so that's the first one. Now we're going to solve for the change in internal energy. And based on a definition of enthalpy, enthalpy is defined as the internal energy plus the pressure times the volume. And here we can, we can use that same equation, but look at the change in each. So change in enthalpy equals the change in internal energy plus the change in the pressure times the volume. Well, we need to know what this pressure times the volume is. And we're gonna get that from the work. Uh, differential dW is equal to negative of the external pressure times the change in volume. Now we don't know the change in volume, but we do know that the pressure is constant. We're going to say that the external pressure is the same as the system pressure because it's under constant pressure. And we'll substitute this in using the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, so let's just substitute that into there. Uh, we know that the number of moles are constant because the gas doesn't change, R is a constant, so we're just looking at the change in temperature which we have right here. So, okay, so we can solve for the change in internal energy, which equals the change in enthalpy minus this, kind of just move this transpose to the other side and then solve for delta U. And at this point, we can plug in our numbers. So the change in enthalpy is 2,890 joules minus our N, our R, and our T, which is the difference, this difference right here. And if we plug that in, we get uh, plus 2,241 joules. So the system gains energy, and that makes sense because it heats up. Okay, so now that we got the change in the enthalpy and the change in the internal energy, we can get the work. And the work readily is this term right here. It's this term, right? Because this is our work. Work equals negative P delta V. Well, P is constant, so if we yank this out, we get P delta V, which is like our work, which is, but this is the negative of the work, right? This is the negative. So it'd be the negative of this, we have a negative here when we moved it to the other side, so our work is negative 648 joules. Okay, y'all, hope that made sense. Uh, if there's anything kind of confusing or whatnot, please let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll respond back. Uh, but good luck and, and hang in there. Thermal is not the easiest subject, but you just got to keep doing problems over and over and over again. I was never good at these problems when I started. I had to do many, many problems over many textbooks, and finally, it made sense. I'm hoping these videos will expedite for you, expedite the learning process for you so you can do them better and better and do well on your exams. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.